Welcome to Drop the Mic, the Chamber podcast with me, your host, Mo Beliveau, the Executive Director of the Chamber of Greater East Hampton. And this is where I get to chat with local people of interest, business owners, entrepreneurs. Um, I get to chat about uh, who they are, what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. So that's why we're here today. Um, Before we get started with our guest for episode four is I would like to say thank you to our partner, East Hampton Media. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to work with them on this project and um, delights me to no end. So thank you, Jen Ramsey and your team. Jen is here with us behind the camera today. And you too can embark on podcasting if you so choose. Uh, All you need to do is uh, contact East Hampton Media via easthamptonmedia.org and they would be happy and delighted to get you on your podcasting way. Jeff Bagg. Hi. What's going on? I'm going to do a podcast. How are you today? (laughs) Very good. How are you? I am over the moon and delighted and thank you for being my guest today. I'm happy to be here. Um, Are you? I'm not so (laughs) sure about that. Um, I didn't sleep good last night. I was thinking about it. I know. I'm sorry. It's really not that big a deal. So we're just going to chit chat away. And if you don't know who Jeff Bagg is, he is um, East Hampton's city planner. And he joined us here as city planner when? Two years ago. Almost exactly. Nice. Nice. And it's uh, it's been a whirlwind for you. Yeah ever since you started. So before we get into city planning stuff, (laughs) I have a burning question for you. Okay. And the burning question is, when you're hanging out here in East Hampton, in your hometown, you're here and you live here in East Hampton, yes? Yep, yep. So you're at your favorite restaurant. What is your go-to meal for that that night? Mm -hmm. This is a good question. two parts oh so we have two kids Mm, okay so most of the time they pick where we go but when you get to pick okay so when we when they pick they go to riffs they love riffs nice who doesn't love riffs that's right so i'm definitely getting a burger there nice all the time and then we had the unique pleasure to go to mission cantina finally oh so i have not yet been there it was our pre-valentine's day Oh, trip. nice. No kids. Nice. <clears throat> so what did I get? We got nachos. Mm. And then we got a taco. We just got a taco. And it was nice. awesome. Nice. Nice. So, so you beat the crowds. We were part of the crowd. Oh, well, right. Still. <laughs> still. Yeah, that place is crazy. Huh. It's so small. Yeah. Uh, I think that's part of the model. Yeah. It works really well for them. But we waited for a while. Good for them. But we were patient. Some people were kind of, you know surprised that there's a wait <laughs> what <laughs> what's going on there's a couple se- there was a couple seats open at the bar and so people came right in they're like i'll sit there yeah yeah, and yeah. Like, uh, we got a little system here nah, yeah 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 <laughs> you can't just do that but it was great so jeff before we get off and running on city planning sort of stuff i want to just if you could just kind of give us a little background as to who you who you are you know what's your you know you have a family mm-hmm. yes yep. here in east Hampton. Get, tell us a little about that about your family yeah, so uh, my wife, Megan, mm-hmm. uh, it's great. We've been married since 2008, oh. and we met officially in we 2002, mm-hmm. so we've been together for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got two daughters, mm-hmm. one's eight, one's five and a half, Nice. and they pretty much uh, rule the roost mm-hmm. right now. So. As young children do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm so, told it doesn't end for a while, so I think. No, your we're, life, we're, we're as you knew it, is not ever going to be the same as I understand. I don't have children, so but I can I, just from outside looking in. It's like, how do people do this? Yeah, it's craziness. Uh, it's. I heard someone say this recently, but it, I was thinking about it. And this is the busiest, <laughs> like we've ever been. Yeah. Just nonstop from waking up yeah. to bedtime. I get the small window. Yep. From nine thirty to eleven, I'll watch TV. No quiet time for you. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> Very happy. We love it. So Good. we live in East Hampton. We bought our house in t- 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, a long story to how we got there, but I actually grew up in East Hampton. Okay. So you're a native. Yep. All right. Uh, I didn't know that. Nope. And so I went to like I went to Maple Street as a okay. kid, and no. I went to Whitebrook. Wow. And then I and then I for 
I don't know. You know, when you're going into high school, you're not making your own decisions. But I went to Holyoke Catholic uh -huh. for high school. Interesting. But up until then, I was in East Hampton. Wow. So that's that's really kind of, when you talk about coming full circle, yeah. and now you're a city planner. So give me a little bit of information about you, more specifically. So you are, how do how does one become a city planner? And, and <laughs> where have you, where were you before? And all that good stuff. Sure. Weren't you, did you, weren't you previously over in, in Amherst? Yep. Because I think I was at a meeting with you. Yes. So I was, Very, yeah. A I, while I, ago. It was a while ago. I worked in Amherst from. It was a brief thing. Yeah. From 2008 to 2015. Okay. So eight years. And my joke, I love Amherst, but my joke is like, that's dog years. Like <laughs> doing planning work in Amherst. Right. Is, it's like dog years. Uh -huh. So I learned a lot. It was great. Well, they were, they were like on a fast track. They had a lot of different building going on, a lot of different, I, I want to say zoning too, but you yeah. know, with that um, recent project that just. There's tons. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. They did a lot. And I, you know, it was just a world of experience that I was gathering there. Nice. Um, and I got to a point where I, I was doing certain work and I, I was like, okay, you know, I, I got this mm -hmm. and I want to do more. And I, I just kept kind of just broadening the work I was doing and it, there was some support for that. What um, do you mean you want to do more? Like, so what's the foundation that now you want to do more from? I don't understand what that is. I think in, if you think about planning, it's it's not clear. Like most people are like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, and then <laughs> I get a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes into it and I, people are glossing over. Oh. So I'm like, okay, well, anyway. They're just kind of standing there and breathing. There's, there's <laughs> stuff that you're dealing with with like current. Yep. projects yep. so permitting mm -hmm. land use and that's statutory like towns have to have planning boards zoning boards and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and you have to be responsive you have to deal with that stuff and then there's actual planning where you're not in the present you're trying to look into the future right so i you know i i've kind of mastered the the permitting part um a lot of laws and Massachusetts state law and all this stuff and mm -hmm. you know you can figure it out mm -hmm. the foundational stuff yep mm -hmm. and then it was really just I wanted to continue to do more mm -hmm. so you know we looked at a lot of parking related issues in Amherst and a lot of um, at that time it was town meeting so it was really thinking that you know this is where I learned that planning is probably just roughly 80% people and 20% technical thing mm -hmm. so so just learning about so eighty percent getting like input, wants, needs, and desires, or and then actually the, the other twenty percent technical being okay. Now we're going to work this out on a plan. Pretty much okay. But like the people part is education. So just making people aware of you know you don't start with the twenty percent technical. You have to help people understand kind of the, the basics, why. the what, the why, and where they fit in. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to realize that. It wasn't really the twenty percent technical. It was the eighty percent dealing with people and helping mm -hmm. them understand process mm -hmm. or timelines. And and I think where I'm at today in this in this role in East Hampton is is really exciting. There's so much going on, but uh, part of it for me is still managing expectations. Yes. Um, yes. So so some portion of it is managing expectations, and then the other part is trying to advance sort of community goals and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's been really interesting. So what is your, I wanna back up just a little bit regarding your education. Sure. And so like when was it in your life, was there like a moment where like, oh, city, urban, community planning, that's what I wanna do. Like was that, was that a moment for you or was that just like something that evolved? It was really an evolution. Uh huh. <clears throat> I remember so I said earlier, I have a terrible memory. So like going back, like I know I went to Maple Street School. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> but uh, I don't, like I am not the type of person who remembers my teachers. Some right. people remember teachers and all that stuff. So I just, I know I was there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we know you were there too because here you are. <laughs> but I went to, um, I, think my, I think my parents, because I think that they were just like, uh, so they, they gave me some guidance. They were really helpful along the way. But so I went to, uh, Springfield Technical Community College for two years. Nice. So after after high school, um, I went to Stick, and I distinctly remember a political science class, and the guy 
the teacher, the professor was in the auditorium. He he stood up on his desk and just I don't remember what he was saying, but right. I remember he stood up on the desk right. and was just spewing out stuff. Stuff. Uh huh. And I was like, oh, this is this is pretty interesting. Oh, he's got my attention. Sort so of. So I've always been interested in kind of politics. Okay. And then it was policy. Uh huh. So then I went to UMass Amherst. Uh huh. And I thought I was going to do environmental science. That oh, was, I can I, see that. Yep. I could see that for you. Yeah, except I'm terrible at math and chemistry. It was uh, awful. Well, it was awful. It was a like a totally strange experience in college where I was like, I, I, I don't want to do this. Uh-huh. This isn't what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So um, I found natural resource conservation and I minored in public policy. And I was like, okay, you know, this is this is definitely what I'm thinking about doing. Mm-hmm. And then I had, I really had no idea. Um, so kind of quick jumping ahead, finished all that. And uh, Megan and I met, so my wife met, we met at UMass and then we were, we graduated and we got uh, internship through SCA, like Student Conservation Association. Oh, okay. And I remember distinctly pouring through pages and pages of all these internships like trail building and there's all kinds of like really cool stuff but right. I found the one that was working for the the town of New Paltz in New oh, York. Oh, yeah. So I found the one <laughs> that was um, working in town hall and it was working with their open space committee. Oh. And so I you know I signed up for that. I got that. We were there. We had 6 month internships and we ended up living in New Paltz for 3 years. Nice. We and we so we had an apartment there. Nice. We both joined the Environmental Commission. So it's like the Conservation Commission here where I was the chair. So I Wow, so at young, a young age. So young. They were like, oh, new blood. <laughs> 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 and Mwah. at that time, like, uh, the, the I, I, so I have some distinct memories of this, but the mayor of New Paltz was um, this guy, Jason, and he was, he was super young. He was like, Maybe before the it's mayor, the land of the young. Over maybe there. before the mayor of Holyoke, he was like the youngest mayor. Really? And so we just had this group of friends. We were just really involved. Nice. And I remember we um, and influencing. We were trying. We were, yeah, yeah, we were yeah, you so were. eager to just be doing stuff. Um, and they were like, "Please help us." So we have Score. like there's a couple pictures. We um, little placards. So in New Paltz, it drains to the Hudson River. So like the watershed. So we spent like a weekend um, gluing these little emblems to the storm drain saying don't dump drains. Oh, to the, so right. we were just like uh, really involved and that was Wow. Kind Down of start, to some details. Start of the progression. Wow. And Megan worked at Minnewaska State Park. Uh-huh. So she was uh, edu- cool. doing environmental education. Uh-huh. And so that followed through for her. So she's now a teacher. So you have a very strong commitment and dedication to civic um, a engagement and B uh, getting it done. How do I know how to well how to phrase that? But yeah, but it was creation and betterment, all that stuff. Yeah, cool. So now you're here in um, East Hampton and you're doing city planning. And I want to know now. I mean, it's it's there's a lot of stuff going on in East Hampton, and we're really excited. And there's a lot of buzz. Mm-hmm. And a lot of interest from, uh, the, you know, the community here, local, but yet, and also uh, regionally and abroad. Um, but I want to know, um, as far as city planning now, you were over in Amherst and you were doing a lot of that policy and foundational stuff. Mm-hmm. But what about um, city planning here in East Hampton? Because I watch you. And um, I'm very impressed with, there seems to be a deeper, what's the word I'm looking for? A deeper desire around planning the community and the city itself around, you know, beyond economics and beyond, so it, that connectivity, that, that connecting between yeah. the residents who live here and city planning. There's more than economic development. There's more than, you know, the flow of traffic. Right. What is that for you? I feel like there's something more going on there for you. There certainly is. I, and it's hard. It's not one, like I can't put my finger on it, but I think um, what's really noticeable 
to me is this energy and it's people investing. So it doesn't have to necessarily be money. No, that's but not, But their yeah. time, um, kind of looking around at some of the businesses that are, exist now, Pat, and look back five years or something, but um, there's, there's this pattern of people who kind of came to locate a business in East Hampton and then ended up living here. Mm -hmm. And then, so there's a lot, if you look around, they either live here, you know, and have their business here, or they have moved here and they have kids here and they have their business here and that, um, and then it kind of goes up in scale to some of the, you know, like the crazy mill owners. <laughs> so we, like, it's so amazing what's happening in this row of mills here. Right. And it's people who took kind of a crazy leap of faith um, a long time ago and, and really hunkered down and waited. Um, and in the meantime, there were, there was people just doing stuff. So that's, I'm really always trying to be aware that I'm kind of just trying to harness some of the energy and put it in a direction. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, a, you know, it's other people, right. other people are doing this and they're, um, really just supporting the growth and the excitement. Right. Um, but the diversity of what's going on. And um, I think the big thing for me, I'm, I'm drifting. That's okay. I will drift. That's but, okay. Uh, like um, what I think I see is people who live in East Hampton, so of all ages, they're doing stuff in East Hampton. So yeah. not really, it doesn't matter really the age, like if, you know, people have their little places to hang out and they're, they're doing it here. And when I was a kid, um, no one, not no one, like I certainly wasn't hanging out in East Hampton. Right. We were always going to Northampton. Right. And I hear that a lot, actually. It's I love Northampton too. Yes. So uh, there are Northampton's great, um, but the fact that you can do, so you can raise a family, have them go to school, you can have recreational activities, and you can go out to eat, and you can you can go to Winterfest, and you can yeah. do all these things. Um, all without leaving East Hampton right. it's just phenomenal and so I just see like when I was growing up my, my parents used to go to Holyoke and then to do stuff and then yep. we would go to Northampton um, and I think as we evolve we're seeing these incremental changes yeah. which I think is the way to go yep. so so you know Big E's is great you know we have a hardware store like they know me like every, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like oh you're working on a project yeah I'm there like three times on a Saturday yeah 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 uh, that to me is really part of what's happening and it's hard to put your finger on it. But. Right. Because I feel like there's a direct correlation between your job, your the bigger uh, definition of your job and planning and what helps glue the community together. Yeah. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm even making sense. It's hard because planning is a hard thing to describe. So I I see a large part of what I'm doing is facilitating. I was just going to say, even, is, yeah. is planning even the right word? To some extent it is, but then it, it branches beyond that. So, you know, I'm big on people come in all the time with random questions and, and curious problems. And I, I've really taken this approach that I don't want to just say, go talk to DPW. You know, I'll, I'll bring them around. I'll walk them around and say, look here's this person they got this driveway thing or whatever and try to right. work it out and and so that was where i've i am using all my skills nice. that I, and i and some that i don't have so i'm learning i'm still learning so well that's even better like i learned a lot that planning like if you're doing the permitting part like you can't just be like okay you got your permit see you see later like there's then you go to the next department and you have to get a building permit right and then you have right. to see like a project through construction and then you finally yay yeah, you have right. something new and so really just trying to see some of these processes all the way through right um but the the bigger thing i think is um the city has a, a master plan from 2008 right and started a couple of years before that with with input and things happening and then 2008 it was like published what i what i see and there's a lot of people to thank for this. So, so Jess Allen was the planner before me, and Stuart Beckley. You know, I'm very cognizant that they were doing a lot to advance goals. Yeah. But I look at that plan, and so many of them are done. Isn't that amazing? Uh, accomplished. I have have 
that was I think I took a look at that uh, maybe two years ago for the first time, and mm-hmm. I was like, wow, it seems to me as a n- new resident of East Hampton, I've only been here for four years, four and a half. I was like, holy moly, a lot of what the vision was has been um, implemented yep. and completed, and I have to say, I think it's interesting because many communities have more than one strategic plan kicking around because like, well, we're not going to do this one. We're going to do another strategic plan. I'm like, uh, and it's very, I find it unique that East Hampton doesn't have more than one. They have their one and they've been working it. Yeah. And it's been crazy cool. Yeah. But it's also the point. Like, so when I, when I started, you know, I, I've been living here. So we lived here in 2010 and we were seeing all this greatness. Mm. and loving it so mm-hmm. like we're like we live near Nantuck Park so we can walk to town so yeah. it's like a planner's dream I was like we p- we picked this house it was a total fixer upper right I know my husband and I did this we're thing. like ugh but totally worth it <clears throat> but the walkability of the city is yeah. insane you know the structure the bones the potential I just it's just a, it doesn't cease to amaze me and, and I feel like so many have said to me Mo you weren't here 15, 10 years ago when it was not this, but and yet I see so much more potential even before us. Yeah. And it's hard because some of the areas are walkable and some are not. Right. So, but so that's the, what you're working on. Yeah. Some will be unattainable. And that's... So, you know, if you look out, like, um, the, there's neighborhoods off of Oliver Street in mm-hmm. Glendale and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, they don't have sidewalks and it's yeah it's, that's tough you know funding is a huge deal right um like a laser my focus has been using our plans because we do have more than one plan so we have a couple of sets of plans that are the guidance that i'm using and then looking at the funding sources that are available like a laser so to, to just pick the funding yeah. source and find the project that's in the plan and pursue it Right. So it's really hard because you definitely have people who are like, well, what about this? Yes. And what about that street? And what about right. this? And I, it's difficult because um, they should be listed somewhere. And at the right time, there could be the potential for funding to be available. And that's the kind of the time to strike. Right. So we've really been looking at that. Um, but you have a really great, great way of communicating that. I watch, again, I'm not like a weirdo or anything, but I'm off on the side and I watch you do your work. And it's really interesting because you have a really... You've honed the skill, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but of of listening to your community or the folks who are in front of you and hearing what they're saying, understanding where they're coming from, and also being able to communicate, you know, yes, that is important. However, XYZ needs to be in place and in line in order for that to happen. And I feel like a lot of times people may not necessarily want to hear that but i think they feel better once they hear why yeah. from you and you have a really you've really got a great skill at that thank you yeah it's really quite impressive i wish i had that so i'm working on that <clears throat> i mean You're there's speaking th- in that area there's just a lot to there's a lot i mean um i think in this day and age figuring out how to let people know what's going on is is still a huge challenge. I mean, wow. I'll put a plug in. I know, yep. we talk about that a lot. Yeah. Yep. It's it's tough, and um, it's, it's a little painful for me, for me to say this, but Facebook is is kind of what we can use right now. It's it's It hits the broadest n- a number of people. Mm-hmm. It's a double-edged sword. Um, the, I have doubled down on using um, the planning department Facebook page to, yes. to get information out. Yep. And, um, you know, I'll which use, we try to help you do. I use my dad as an example. So, you know, he's older. He's not that old, but he's older. That's gonna say. And old. he's on Facebook, and so I know it. And so I like there are people he's probably who are, my age. Horrible. <laughs> no, he's older. Well, not much. But I'm I think sure. he turned seventy this year. Oh, okay. But okay. I feel so fine. I realize fully that not everyone touches Facebook and that's fine but there are uh, a large number of people who do and so I really have been trying to um, ask people to to like or follow it because for the time being you know it's it's the best way that we can kind of get some words out and we try like 
the mayor and I have talked a lot about how we can do better. Mm-hmm. But there's it's people. Mm-hmm. Like all of this is someone doing it. Right. Somewhere I hear behind you. I, the trust scenes. Me, I know. Right. Right. And you do that. We talked about that. It's like it's I have one and a half people. And it seems like it'd be really easy, but to make content that is interesting and then up to date and then Accurate. F- accurate. Yeah, thank you. Frequently enough that it's that someone would actually pay attention that, right. that that's a lot of work it so is i'm i've been doing as much as i can um but we are also you know doing press release so press release um and then we have a great relationship with the gazette and mass live nice so we're we're announ- we you know we announced that the downtown strategic plan is is done yes i saw it's, that it was it's, awesome it's draft yep. but and so it's draft for two weeks um because we we asked the consultant for a little extra because mm-hmm. they were like, "Here's your here's your report," and I was like, "Well, what about what about a small public comment period? I mean, we have to at least make sure we didn't miss anything." Yep. Um, they didn't want <laughs> they didn't really want to do that, but we we got it. Stood your ground, right? Good so, for you. So you know, I I talked to the Gazette yesterday and Mass Live both yesterday to have them help say something for us, and I nice. I tried to emphasize that the most important thing is that people know that there's a plan, right? And whether or not it's not set in stone, but it's a guide. Yeah. But if, you know, if people don't know, I mean, we can't send stuff in the mail. It's too expensive. Right. It's just cost prohibitive. Yeah. And no. then, and then no what more. the fear is that if you send stuff in the mail all the time, well, you know where it's going to go is in the recycling I know. container. And so it's just like any kind of communication. It's it's hit or miss. There's going to be some folks who are going to read that. There's, it's just, there's some folks who are not going to read it. Uh, it's the same for Facebook and whatever. So you yeah. just have to kind of just be do the best you can and that's what you and you're doing that the best that you can with what you got mm-hmm. right so um we also have we also have everything posted on the website too so it's not that i am relying solely on facebook i just want to put that in there so the planning department has a face uh a website that has basically everything we're doing it's there yeah but it's a couple clicks in so yeah yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you got to take the time. If you want to be informed, you got to take the time to educate yourself. That's a little bit of a responsibility we all have to take as individuals. Yeah. It can't always be, you know, like the ice cream sundae comes in front of you. <laughs> you got to go. It would be nice. Yeah, I know, but not. Um, so uh, I'd, before I get into uh, if there's any projects that you want to share um, or not, um, you know, all communities have their existing challenges or unique challenges and not going into what um, those challenges might be for East Hampton. But I'm wondering from your perspective, you know, we talked about that buzz and that excitement and that energy. What do you think it is about East Hampton that sets us apart from our surrounding community? Oh, that's a good question. Um, do we need to move on? <laughs> well, I think, I, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, I think it's, I think some people feel like it's all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that's a little bit of a reaction that I, I know I've heard. Um, that we're all of a sudden, it's like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. But it hasn't been. I mean, when you look back, it's all been part of a strategy. And it's not like a weird one. It's just like, Going back to so, 2000, like Cottage Street got rebuilt in 2002. Mm-hmm. And it was designed to um, put parking on the street. Mm-hmm. And it was intended to park cars there mm-hmm. and bring people. And that took a long time like, yeah. kind of to come to, to see the results of that. Yeah. So um, I guess it's just that it's not, a, it's not all, it, it may seem like all of a sudden depending on what part right. you're looking at, but it's not on, it's not an unintended kind of situation. Do you think that there's any one particular thing that sets us apart, or do you think it's the culmination of all of those mundane things that has set us apart? It's probably the culmination of a lot of things, all, all kind of coalescing at the same time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always m- trying to make sure that people realize that there were artists in some of these mills before it was kind of cool to be an artist in one of the mills. Mm-hmm. So there was people who were who made their decision 
that this is where they were going to live and work a long time ago. And so like, that's my, that's my interpretation of this is and if you look at um, one cottage street, yeah, you know, it's for a long time, it was artists and they were doing their craft. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, along the way they came up with the open studios idea, which yeah. was fantastic. And yeah. then, and then the evolution was a little bit of the excitement. And I remember when, when uh, popcorn noir opened yeah, and we went there. So cool. It was so cool. Yeah. It was so different. Yeah. And for us, so in, the, in our moment of time, that was like, we're like, whoa, something's, this is, you know, pretty unique. And then um, in, in 2013, the, the cultural district got established. Yeah. So it was this blossoming of taking like our arts and culture from, from just hunkered down inside and kind of turning it outward. Yep. And that was, I think arts and culture has been a huge driver. Yeah. For, yeah. For, no for, doubt. For people. Um, no so doubt. that's got to be a factor. Well, and I think it's also too very unique that I think we have um, Pascalina. Mm -hmm. Is she an executive director? What is her title? She is the arts coordinator. Arts coordinator for East Hampton City Arts. Mm -hmm. And that is a city position, which is very unique amongst cities. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think there's a lot of cities um, that are very envious of that. Yeah. And wish that they could have that and they and yeah lots of people and, and there's tons of time and effort to to bring it from a volunteer right through a grant funded position and right then, that was a long evolution slowly taking it off of a grant and putting it as a funded position in the planning department so when i arrived that was kind of the last leg was to find right. the, the final bit of funding so i think that that's, in, that's another piece of a lot of this just like back to what you were saying about how you know we have a strategic plan but there was also strategic thinking that's engaged to bring forward that strategic plan which yeah. are they're two different things the act of th of thinking is not the plan right, right. so that's like slowly uh, that's an interesting thing yeah and i you know not to belabor the point at all but the 2008 plan was so successful that we're at this point where we're, we're, we've crested the hill and we're, we're looking out. Yeah. It's the future. Yeah. But we don't have the plan. Right. So now we have to, so that's, that's been one of my, so that's what we're, yeah, that's been one of my key. Um, so talking about the laser and the funding sources, other than actual construction projects, the, my focus has been, um, to update our master plan. Mm -hmm. So the reality is that this day and age to hire a consultant, which is what most towns do, it's $150,000 mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. So what the state has been doing is offering all these grants to do studies and, and to look at stuff. So, so it's, it's kind of crazy and a little bit, <laughs> a little bit ambitious, but right. we got the downtown plan going, right? We are just about to launch a, a comprehensive housing study, right? So, so there's a lot going on with our housing market. Yep. Um, and we're gonna put some facts behind the the past several years and what's happening with costs and prices. And then how can we build more housing and possibly where? And so there's this big movement on um, second units, small accessory units. And so, you know, the state is identifying that as like, this is a great way to build some housing. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to follow that model and, and work on that. Um, our open space plan, it's an open space and recreation plan, is gonna expire in October of this year. So I'm working, I'm in the process of working with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to set up the process to update that. Nice. Um, through the planning department, we're trying to do a, um, broaden our historic um, building inventory. Mm -hmm. So there's a study area, so we have some funding that we're applying for to look at some of our historic resources. Mm -hmm. And then, um, through Pascalina's work with the arts coordinator, um, over the past year we did um, the Futures, East Hampton Futures project, which was looking at arts and culture yes. and what, yep. what should that, what should happen, what should it look like in right. 10 years? So the if you paint the picture, oh, we have a new school. So um, the new school is in of itself a huge monumental um, accomplishment. Yeah. It's, it's challenging, you know, we know that it's, it's changing um how how people can pay to pay their taxes mm -hmm. you know not to just avoid that but but 
the schools were identified in the 2008 plan, the elementary schools were identified as being outdated and in need of replacement. So the idea of a new school is not new. It's just happening. Yeah. Um, and then transportation, um, you know, these are all kind of like the topics that get covered in the master plan. And so, you know, um, we joined Valley Bike Share yep. um, last year, yep. which is really just intended to kind of build these opportunities for people to hop on a bike instead of a car yep. for like these short trips. Um, and then we have all these kind of infrastructure projects underway that are enhancing intersections, crosswalks. So if you look at Ferry Street, yeah. um, Cottage Street, you know, Union Street is funded. So, you know, it's, it's easy for people to say like, why don't you do this street or that street or there's not that much, you know, what are you guys doing? But, but this has been in the works for... Right. Yeah. And so what I, to be honest, what I'm struggling with is how to articulate that in a way that's kind of easy to, for people to understand like where all these things are happening. And then the last one is Old Town Hall. So, you know, we have for arts and culture, like as a, as an anchor, um, if that upstairs becomes a right. 300 person theater or music venue, it's going to just, um, be fantastic. And it so, is. so we've got all these things in motion. Um, and then the three elementary school buildings. So as, as students move from the three schools to one, right. You know, immediately uh, as I came on, I came on in March, maybe it was February, or March in 2018 and then mm -hmm. you know the lead up to the vote to whether or not to fund the school was in may right and so sort of immediately was was seeing if if the vote passed to fund the school then we need to like just jump on this and that's the downtown plan um right. so i'm loving this because it's yeah. so many really great things so we know certain things are coming yes and we need to just be preparing for them right um, and then I think if we're prepared for sort of new uses at the schools, um, we'd love to get bicycle and pedestrian access to the new school. And if we do that, then we'll have the framework for what will happen in the next 10 years after that. Wow. So up and beyond the adrenaline rush from all of this <laughs> stuff that goes on, that's going on right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, because it's like, it just seems like it's been, and even, you know, since I've been here, you know, this is um, five years already, it just seems like it's a kaboom, boom, 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 this. But above all of that, for you, what is it that, I mean, I, you, you're supercharged about all of it. What is it that supercharges you about this? You know, because I think some people can be looking in from the in outside and going, oh, well, it's like planning grants and, and yeah. but you're like you call me I'm like no <laughs> which is awesome you know it's you're always excited about it yeah and so what is it about that that excites you watch your eyes I've been thinking about this and so oh. I, I <laughs> it's I think for me right now like my job and my life are almost there's a graying like so I am seeing this opportunity so like we're not we're, we're going to live here regardless of whether I'm the city planner or not. Mm -hmm. So we've already kind of established that. Right. And then in this position right now, there's opportunity to, to, to make projects happen um, that are going to be beneficial to the community. Yep. It's hard because, you know, not everything works for every single person. No. So it's very cognizant of that. But I get it. overall, like some of the projects, you know, there's outside forces that are making stuff happen. So the economy, I think at some level, I'm not an expert, but at some level the economy is good and there's there's investment happening. Yep. And we've been super successful in, in um, the right people choosing to, to do stuff here. So the Ferry Street Project, um, River Valley Co-op, um, the, you know, the evolution of restaurants, mm. you know, there's amazing things happening and I think, um, there's also on Cottage Street, there's a little bit, it's probably elsewhere, but on Cottage Street, there's a little bit of an incubator yep. happening. So um, there's small storefronts, which is super valuable yeah. for small business to come in, get established. Set up and then shop. we're seeing a lot that grow out of the space. And we're so lucky that many of them are moving to another spot in East Hampton, whether it's the mills or somewhere else. Right. So um, for me, I'm just sort of the most invested I've ever been in a job. I've oh, always, awesome. I've always just committed 
myself to the to whatever I'm working on. Right. But I've never so like my last job I was working at a regional planning agency in Worcester. Uh-huh. And there's like forty towns right. surrounding Worcester. And so with we did a master plan for the town of Westbrook Field and I felt like I was I was like, Oh, this town's great. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got got to know it. But I would drive home forty minutes, forty five right, minutes right. at the end of the day. And it's it hasn't been the easiest transition because I'm, you know, I go out to, I go to like Big Y or something. Right. And I just have to be prepared to talk to people because I, I, it's, it's part of the deal. It I'm, is I'm part okay of the deal. I'm with that. But, you know, that was, you know, I'm still, so, so like my accountability is like something I take really seriously. Yeah, like I hear I, that. I'm, it's, it's, I'm on super heightened alert for making sure that, the things that we're talking about and things that we're doing, I can I can be accountable for because I, right. I think it's just inherent. But so, some planners in some towns, you know, you're you're you got people who are committed because they're working and that's really important. But they go home, they go somewhere else. Home. Right. So, so I think, um, you know, coincidentally, the former planner lived in East Hampton as well. Yeah. And so. Um, there's some there's got to be something to that yeah and there if you look around there's a lot of employees actually who live in town mm-hmm. and work in town mm-hmm. so so there is there's some there's some qualities to that that are really well, important i love what immediately caught my attention about what you just explained to me was how you felt like what you do for your living and what your life is there's it has there's gray and i feel that's what i love about what i do with the chamber mm-hmm. it it I just absolutely love, you know, when I was a massage therapist prior to my coming here, my life and, and how I lived my life, that was very intertwined. It was a lifestyle. Right. And I feel like now I have this new direction in my life and it's, and it's providing the same thing. It provides me a moment, many moments throughout the day to be, to strive to be the best that I can be for myself and for the com- for my community my membership and yeah. and that just thrills me to no end yeah. it's like i'm like i'm like ah it's this great. is awesome and um so i can i that's connected to that immediately when you said that that's yeah. really and cool we're just we've been involved for a while and I, I mean like megan is you know she's a teacher she works in southwick but she's on the parent teacher association the pto so oh, she's, okay <laughs> she's the chair of the garden committee and then I think she just became the treasurer of the PTO and I, I think it's just you know you, you find the things that are interests you and you know that's that's what I think is is hard for me because I'm I'm really invested um, it's hard sometimes when people yes. are not quite even close yes and so yes. we get back to that terrible that's tough. terrible little land of facebook so it's great i know but you know it's not enough so it's not enough to just be um participating on facebook because that doesn't actually move things forward and uh, my wor- the worst one was you know someone i uh, i just put it out so now now it's taken care of and i'm you know it's so <laughs> It's hard because to yeah. be engaged and make stuff happen in a in a town. Yes, and you it, put yourself out there every yeah, single day. Right. Every single day, and you're doing really important work to you and your community. And you obviously it comes from someplace other than clicking a time clock. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So when that stuff comes at you, and I've been in that position, it's like it's just like oh my god and you have to sit down and go okay i have to work through this and i have to put it behind me because that's just as much as you want to be loved by everybody not everybody perhaps will and right it's tough especially when you're out there i think it's normal it is normal but it's also it is and it's and it's it's you have to have a tougher skin Mm -hmm. and just be leave in what you're doing yeah and move forward and that can be Sometimes it's easier. To, uh, some days it's easier than others, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've been. With, I think the stuff going on now is great. I think cost of living is a is a huge factor. So there's no silver bullet. You know, there's. I think that's. You know, that's the hard part about yeah. an evolving community. Yep. Is that overall we are evolving the right direction? Yeah. Which is up and out and beyond. Because the only other way, yeah, the only other way is is not desirable either. Right, so, right. And, and staying the same, 
it's just not it's not an option you can't right so so you that's can't. it's that life is life is perpetually moving you forward yeah you mean the universe is expanding out right right we're all that's just the way life is yep but even like <clears throat> since the actual um you know increases in taxes hit from the school you know we we knew that that was going to happen and then it, it obviously happened and it was kind of shocking i think for some people but Kinda. we're we're trying to recalibrate still so so we're looking at some of our sort of older funding sources like community development block grant it's yep. kind of a it's a very rigid yep. um program yep. it's valuable but it's pretty rigid and so we're looking at ways to um shift to like aging in place so to make some options available for people who want to stay in their house um and we there um the council on aging did a study so brendan rogers commissioned a study from umass and it there are a lot of concerns and issues and, and there's a lot of things to address but some of it was if i had these simple changes in my house it'd make it a lot easier to live here and stay here and so right you know we we, we kind of turned yeah to to we're, we're working on that for this next application to and it starts off small like there's right. um grab bars right um, but that's an interesting t- uh pivot yeah 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 and my <laughs> i've said this a couple times like so as a town municipality you know our biggest flaw i think is that we don't we can't move fast well we're just, we're just municipalities not, in general they're not fast right so to pivot with this next application we're, we're trying really hard to be trying to be responsive yep um and that's one of the tools that i know that we have um yeah we don't have any magic um solutions right to just cut taxes back down but i i do think that um economic development is kind of a vague term yes it is but if we continue to um have new businesses build here especially kind of substantial projects just took the thought out of my head that we will increase the tax revenue and we can we can meet more services yeah. if we have more taxes so yeah. so that's the idea is that we need to continue to grow yep we want to do it responsibly but i think um you know, we looked at ferry street um and we created a diff so it's a district improvement financing yep but what that does is like so if you looked at the mill before um it was very low assessed value yep like ten thousand dollars yep but after the redevelopment it'll be significant new tax <laughs> revenue and what we can do is we can take a small portion of that and we can pull it right into that area and we can improve the sidewalks and we can yeah. do road work and we could do um, infrastructure work in that area right so it's a little bit of a model that we want to try to explore um, if you look at some of the other we have a few other larger vacant parcels and so those are going to be the key ones um, that will generate new tax revenue and we can try to upgrade the infrastructure right there because nice. otherwise there's not funding like you right. wouldn't be able to go to the general fund and right. build a ton of sidewalks like it just doesn't so you get to exercise your creativity in a lot of different areas i have been it's been yeah. really fun yeah that's cool and you have and you have a lot of creativity i take it so seriously i mean it's like a big deal so <laughs> it's know. fun in a weird yeah. convoluted way but right um it's a, i'm like i'm really happy it's a good time to be doing planning work yeah here. i know so. i know so um what defines success for you Hmm. I don't know. Um, you know, I just, it's, I think I need to, I need to be finding a balance, you know, cause I've got a family and I, you know, I've got kids, so I'm spending time. Um, so success needs to be spending time with them yeah. and, and of course my wife yeah. and, uh, doing stuff that's fun. So like, yeah. um, on the professional side, it's just, you know, this, this trying the best like i i really am just committed to trying like you know my goal for project management is i can kind of advance projects every day a little bit Mm -hmm. so like i i want to try to have successful days where you know i did 20 little things and i if i do that every day it'll amount to 20 big things along the way so yeah i'm just really trying to do that i'm trying to learn more so Mm. i think success involves trying to continue to learn more yeah. So I, I'm still um, a sponge. Nice. And so, <laughs> so that's <laughs> sweet. Um, I'm a learner myself, so yeah. I love that. Yeah. If I'm learning and I'm sharing what I'm learning is really a pretty awesome. Is it different for you? Is that definition different for you now than it was maybe three years ago? 
Yeah. Yeah. Something. Because you, you know, have a young family. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, my mom passed away in 2013 oh, and I was like, it was, sorry. you know, it was a big deal. Yeah. Life changing. And it is life changing. My husband said to me, you, you n- never know. You know, we, we've been married for a long time, but he's like, you know, when your mother passes, yeah. now you are alone. Yeah. And I thought I, that was interesting. Yeah. It's, it's one of those. It had nothing to do with <laughs> our, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your mom. It's one of those things that just gives you a lot of perspective. And so that happened closely with having our first kid. Mm. So, so our oldest was like a two when she passed away. And so mm. that was all good because they got to meet, but then like my younger daughter never got to meet her. So. Right. Between between kind of like that kind of loss and then having um, then two child two kids, you know, that just gave me just this different perspective on life, and I think it was really important. Mm. Um, I became more motivated after so you know after it happened in grief, and then I just became more motivated. Certain things I didn't care as much about, right. so like yep. thicker skin was yep. a little bit easier to come by. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at that time, because it's yeah there's so much is such silly right yeah Yeah. i was taking um i was we were in i was in the second class of the leadership pioneer valley so lpv oh cool so they i was in the second i did not know that about you so that was in 2013 and um it was emotional during that period but it kind of hit me a few years later The, the stuff that i had learned I was starting to be able to to remember some of it and use it. It was more and, uh, integrated than you had thought. Yes, mm. I mean the the thing that really stuck out to me the most, and I don't know if this this has to do with success, but it has more to do with like dealing with people. And I, um, it was like this uh, analogy that people are like icebergs. No. So, an iceberg, mm-hmm. what you see, is kind of a fraction of what is there Mm -hmm. and so that was that was really helpful for me kind of approaching like what I was going to do next so that was the time when I was you know trying to do more you know with myself and I was like I can do more Nice. so that's when I I left Amherst because I was like um, I can do more you were ready for more I was ready expansion so then I leaped to and I totally transitioned (laughs) into driving to Worcester every day um, and working in a city, yeah, and then Geek. I got I got a lot of quick experience there, yeah, a lot of unique things I was doing, um, and then this this position opened up here, and I was like, yes, so um, I don't know. So success is I I, I still don't know what success is. Uh-huh. You know, I I'm I'm 41. Say it. Because everyone asks, so like, how old? Yeah, everyone's like, "How old are you?" So, I feel like. Well, it can change. It can change. I feel like I'm not done. Still, nice. I mean, I'm I'm here now, but yeah, um, it's hard to understand. Like, and think, well, I don't know what I'll be doing in ten years. Well, nice. And I always gauge it on my kids. Right. And my mind kind of blows up thinking about what, when they're yeah eighteen. Yeah, and the cat's still. She, the oldest is the eight. <laughs> yeah, the cat. Yeah, so we got a cat. Right. So. Nice. So, um, you have a soundtrack for your life. Hmm. What is the one song that absolutely has to be on that soundtrack? I love music. Mm. Um, it's so hard because the influence of children. <laughs> we we have Alexa. Uh huh. So like everyone, you know, whatever about Alexa listening, right. the voice, right? You know, big, big brothers listening to what we listen to. But I'm like, you know what? You can have at it because <laughs> there's nothing going on here. <laughs> there's some ridiculous kid songs that are just like pen- have penetrated mm-hmm. in a weird way. Okay. Um, but you know, it's I don't know. This is a conversation. This is a conversation piece. I don't know. Um, I think it depends on what's going on. I like reggae. So no. my wife likes a lot of reggae. We okay. like reggae. So like, if there's a there's a time and place for that, it's uh-huh. just kind of you know, easy going. Um, so you're a man of many yeah bluegrass many tracks on your soundtrack. We loved bluegrass. Oh, for I a love long bluegrass time. too. Yep. We went to I'm a fiddle player. Really? Yeah. You do a lot. So you said that you were you worked with a civil engineer. Yeah. 
you were a massage therapist. Yeah, I have. You play a, fiddle I, and you're a gardener, yeah, farmer. Farmer, yeah, yeah. We should. We many should, many hats I have. We should flip this <laughs> podcast someday. That'd be great. Somebody should interview. That you. would be fun. All right, so Jeff Bag. Thank you so much for being with me here today Thanks. and being a participant in my little experiment. Happy to do it. Call Drop the Mic. And again, I want to say thank you to Jen Ramsey, her team, East Hampton Media. And again, if you're interested in learning anything at all regarding podcasting or TV show yeah. or anything like that, you can get a hold of Jen and her team at easthamptonmedia.org. And... Jeff, happy planning to you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.